In this video, we'll look at some ideas for calculating loads on our swing set support structure. We assume that the only significant loads on the supporting structure are loads from the swing itself, uh, which we call live loads, and self-weight of the structure, which we call dead load. Uh, if we find that this self-weight is significant uh, as we design the members. To calculate the loads from the swing, uh, we use some ideas from what you might have seen in physics or if you've taken EAS 208 dynamics. Let's first consider the swing in, a verti in the vertical position, um, like this. Uh, so we can think of a, a swing uh, like a pendulum. Uh, so in the vertical position, suppose it has a velocity v, and as it swings, the direction of the velocity changes. And this results in an acceleration called the centrifugal acceleration that is directed towards the center. So if we draw a free body diagram of the swinging person, uh, there is the weight and the force associated with the centrifugal acceleration mv squared over l. And so the tension uh, in the in what in the swing is mg plus mv squared over l. And we may have to amplify this force to account for uh, some impact. So if we apply a load gradually on a structure and the deflection is delta, versus if we apply a load abruptly, the deflection can be as much as two delta because of dynamic effects. So we may need to consider uh, twice mg in the tension uh, if we expect that the swinger will be bouncing around uh, as the person swings. So these are some decisions to be made as we calculate the force. So how do we calculate the velocity? Let's say that the maximum swing angle is alpha. So this is an estimate of how high we expect our swingers to swing. So the potential energy of the swing in the highest position is mg times L times 1 minus cosine alpha. The kinetic energy in the vertical position, the lowest position, is 1 half mv squared. So if we equate the two, v squared equals twice gl times 1 minus cosine alpha. And that's an estimate for the velocity and consequently for the centrifugal force. So what is a reasonable inclined position to consider? If the inclined position is too high, then the centrifugal force is too small, so there's really nothing pulling at the swing. If the position is too low, the centrifugal force is larger, but the overturning effect uh, is not large. So we want to count balance these two um, effects. So we consider load case 1, uh, which is the vertical configuration with the largest centrifugal force, because the velocity is highest in the vertical position. And load case 2, uh, which we want it to be a suitable inclined position in which we want to get the greatest overturning effect. Uh, 